Dave here. How are you? Today is the 11th of August, one of my daughter's birthdays today of 2019. My baby, as a matter of fact, my youngest. All right, so on the show today, well, I hope, start, of course, I hope everyone's had a good week. Um, I need to see some of the projects that you guys are up to as well. Now, where are we up to? Uh, channel, how's the weather? Another Leo. Yes, yes. Okay, so I guess from that, the sound is coming through. It was your birthday yesterday, Trev? So I'm guessing the sound is coming through well. The image is fine. I've tweaked the video a little bit this week, so it's not going to blow all the highlights. So it should be fine, no matter where I am. But I've also, as I do normally now, I've locked the focus so it doesn't hunt. All right, Stephen Lee, good day. How are you? Happy birthday to youngest. Thanks, Gillies. Now, on the show today, I noticed someone said I was probably still in makeup. I think I'd be there for a while, wouldn't I? All right, what do we got? What do we got? Antique dresser. We're going to do a little bit more. You know, maybe we had forgotten about this antique dressing table that my great grandfather Arthur made for my mum. And so we're doing some repair work on that. And also, thanks to Carbotech for putting up the prize this week or the giveaway. Now, one of them is a Japanese flush cut saw. The another one is a folding saw. Now, this is a heavy duty one. This is my pruning uh, saw and it's a pull cut. So it's a Japanese style. And how good is it that they fold up? Put that back into there. And my favorite is this one. This is my fine tooth Japanese saw and it is absolutely beautiful. Why is it my favorite? I've got other Japanese saws on the wall. This one, I can fold it like so and I can throw it in my toolbox and not worry about stuffing any of the teeth. Teeth, not teeth. T-E-F-T-E-P-H-T-E-E-T-H. Where's it stop? Crazy language that we've got. Now, if you want to win those three saws, that, this is a one package to one lucky Australian winner. I'm sorry, guys, but Carbotech is an Australian company. It's not an international competition. They are looking after the locals. And fair enough. It's their money. Why not? Now, if you want to, you can enter the competition by opening up below here. See, below this screen, if you're on a computer... And also, if you're on a phone, you might be able to do it as well. If you have a look down, turn the phone into portrait mode, that way up. And then there'll be a little arrow there and it will open up all the links that are in below the image as you're watching. And in there is the entry to the competition. Click on that and it'll take you through. Um, also down there, I've also started doing Amazon Australia again, and I found some cracker stuff and I've actually bought one, <laughs> something myself on it because it was just too good to be true. It's an eight piece um, Vix bit style. It's not a Vix bit. It's a Vix bit style. It's a Chinese one. Obviously, it's going to be cheaper, but for $18.90 or something like that. So and there was a five millimeter and a quarter inch and they were the ones I was after. So. Do yourself a favor and help the show out a little bit. Use those links. And also there's links there to the States, UK, Spain, France. You know, from wherever you're watching, you should be able to, and Germany, you should be able to find something. So how cool is that? These are fantastic. My favorite, favorite saws. Well, hand saws, that is. My favorite saw, of course, is my TS-55. All right, what's the other thing we're gonna do? We're moving through quickly. Four minutes past. Uh, bull nose and inch and a quarter shoulder plane. Now, I started looking around for those last week, ferret ferreting around in my toy box, Arthur's toolbox, and uh, I couldn't find them. But I found them, and we'll have a little bit of a look at those. And I've, while I was waiting for the show to start, I started tidying the inch and a quarter up. And, man, man, the end of it, I didn't even realize till I started cleaning it up, cursive script, a... J. Johnson, written across the nose. Man, it's beautiful. It, these were works of art. As I said last week, these tools weren't just functional. They were reflective 
of the period that these guys were working. I'm guessing it would have been a um, uh, Victorian period. Correct me if I'm wrong. So Arthur, this guy here, he was born in 1872. So, you know, work with that. I'm guessing that would have been a Victorian period. But I'm going to have a quick read down the side here. Um, been bombarded by Ted McGrath's sales pitch. I have no idea what's happening. I try and leave politics out of the show. So if you guys could leave it out of the show as well, that'd be lovely. This is about woodworking. It's not about airing grievances from what's happening in your particular part of the world as far as politics is concerned. If you've got snow on your driveway, love to hear that. But that's about as far as we go. The rest of it's woodworking. Um, Morning Dave picked up a Mark II path guide system from Carbotech Perth halfway through my first bench stop, loving the accuracy. They are fantastic. Chris, you haven't missed anything really. You can watch the recording and pick up from there. Still looks better than the, uh, the panel version than the panel version from Woodpeckers. Yeah, I've, I had a look at that. See, the thing is, if you've heard of something called creep, not me, <laughs> I'm not a creep, but creep, there's error will continue to compound. So with that particular guide, I've seen this kind of thing before, where you'll have a panel of, you know, basically this the Stanton bench kind of thing, your MFT3, whatever you want to call it. And it will have dogs that push in and it holds it in position. And you've got a, a, um, a copy ring in a router and you make some more holes and you use those holes as your reference for the next lot. Now it's only very small. So over two meters, I can't see how it's going to hold it steady. See, with the path guides, they're a meter long. So two meters, you're only having one second bite at it. So, you know, I, I just feel that it's going to be a more accurate system than what woodpeckers are offering. But if, if all you're after is a kind of a regular hole pattern, go for it. Why not? Um, Astery, because creep sets in. Okay. 69.21. Lovely. What's the next thing we're going to look at? The next thing, the next thing, and the next thing. Measuring stops on my docking station. Quick look. Now, I had someone contact me last night saying, Dave, I want to have a look at putting the... He's just bought a CapEx, so he wants to put the CapEx in his docking station, and he wants to see how I've set mine up. So I'll go through that a little bit later in the show as well. All right. Uh, Labworks, good morning. Good morning. Hand carving. This, we might start off with this one. Hey Dave, Artisan, do you think one of those Carbotech one horse underpower bench dust extractors are okay for general use and table source? All right, well, I'll talk about that right at the moment. The collection bag, which is also the filter, has a weave of 30 microns. Now that's because it's doubling up. It's being the bag and the filter at the same time. So as the bag fills up with dust in the bottom, it's blocking half of the weave straight away. So it has to allow a whole heap of dust out. Personally, I'm not a fan of them. I prefer the upright one. I've got the one horse out there for the, for the CNC machine. That's the upright model, and I've put the one micron pleated cartridge filter on it. Now, one micron versus 30 microns? It's your call. It's your call. But as I say, if it's, it's better than not having a filter at all. And I'm sure that Carbotech would agree with me there. It's, it's better than not having any dust collection. But if you want to be serious about it, I would go to something that's going to be the upright uh, with a, you know, it's, it's going to work better. That's all there is to it. But if, if uh, the geography in your shop, as in basically how you've got things laid out and... Uh, Finance, I think it's about the same price as the upright. If those things are factors that only allow you to have the, the one that's the horizontal style, we'll go for it. You can also mount that one on the wall, leave the wheels off, and it hooks onto the wall with the dust bag pointing down. There you go. Uh, would having a separate bin help? Yeah, but you're still going to get those fines. Those really, really fine particles are going to come through. Up to you. If you leave the door open in the garage, that might help. 
I'm not leaving any doors open today because it's very cold outside. We had snow yesterday, only four suburbs away from us, and uh, it was a cold night. Cold night, cold night, cold night. So the carving, that was the first thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to pop Zoe's thing down there. And the keyboard, I'll move out of the way as well. And I think that's all that's happening there. Yep. All right. Now, I need to achieve this scroll. Okay, so this is on the damaged part of the table. So the new table that I'm building, or the new part, this is what I made. Now I have created this perfectly now, and I've had a little bit of a go at carving. So I didn't do it the way that I should have done it. To give you a little bit more of an indication about how this is going to work, that is going to go beside it, like so, and clamp onto there. I'll move out of the way a little bit. And this is a, a relief there, a shadow line when it goes on. And the mirror mount will be here. Okay. So this will be the right hand side of the dressing table from the front at the back. So if I put it all the way back here, you'll see where I'm going. There is a drawer box sits here that you see that I've already rebuilt most of those. And as I say, there's another, there's a panel that goes in here. So I have to create a mortise here for the, for the tenon on the end of the panel to go into. And there's another piece goes on the end here. Now on the top of here and the top of this other piece are finials. And you'll see Theo, the, uh, the wood turner made one for me. And I might have a go at making a couple as well, because I I'm, decide I'm going to go with the two finials up here. I was watching an episode of Agatha Christie last night on TV. Not that I watch it much. My wife likes to watch these things. And I'm sitting in the lounge room. I don't really have much choice in the matter, do I, baby? Anyway, um, <laughs> she'll be giggling now. Uh, so I saw one of these dressing tables in the show last night. And it was the same period and had the finial on the top on both there. So I was going to round this over like this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to set the finial up there. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is, where's the other piece? I had it ready. Don't you love it when this kind of stuff happens? I did have it ready. There it is. There's the other one. So they will be going, as I say, side to side like that, either side of the mirror. So I have the carving in, the, in this one. I'm looking back to front in the, in the screen here. And I've got this one, CNC. No, Chris, I can't do it with the CNC. The reason being, here's an interesting thing. What Arthur's done, and I'm doing exactly the same, there is a hard edge there. See that? There's no round on it. Now he's maintained that hard edge right the way through the carving up to here. So the V cut is on this side of the carve. So basically we're going straight down with the chisel and then the other chisel's coming in at an angle. Now if I've got a, I thought about the CNC, but it's spinning. I was going to do it with a 60 degree, but it's got, because it's rotating, it's going to replicate either side. So I couldn't do that with the CNC. But what we're going to do is, I, because I spent a lot of time with the card scraper here and some, a block, you know, sandpaper on a cork block, it did look like this. I'm sure you'll be able to see that. So what I'm going to do rather, rather than try and sand it and use the card scraper again on this to make them um, identical, I'm going to do it on the router table. We're going to do that right now. So give me a second. I'm going to move that other camera around to the router table. Talk amongst yourselves again while I'm doing this bit. Oh dear. So I hope everyone has had a good week. I'll tip that down just a little bit. And things have been going well for you. Sorry, I also wanted to say four degrees and snow last night in Armidale's. 
Not a problem, Silver. It has been cold. Let me have a look, see if I can see the other camera here. And we want that in there as well. Let's switch the cameras over now to there. Now you'll see I'm in the screen just here, and I'm also just here. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? I'm going to rotate. I think I'll rotate this screen around as well. It's pretty handy having these two cameras. I haven't had Carl Cam lately because I've got, um, I'll tip that down as well there, because I haven't been doing stuff down that end. Tip this up, that's just silly. So I can talk to you. There you go. Down a little, too much light. That's better. All right, now, Keep your eyes on here. You know, I feel like I've got the guy, the guy with the coconuts and a, something underneath it. Now, I'm going to use John's um, dust guard on this. Now, that's by no coincidence, of course. It would have been better if I had the taller one here, but that hasn't arrived yet. So I'm going to run you through how I change the router cutter in my particular machine. Now I've got a three and a quarter horse Triton and it is unplugged and turned off. The only way that you can change a cutter in a Triton router is turn the power, the, the, turn the switch off and it's got a plastic shield comes across the front so you can't turn it back on again. And that all happens when you raise it all the way up because a pin locks into the um, armature. And it's got a quarter inch cutter in the moment and these routers have, I'll undo it and it'll be one full rotation after I unlock it and then it's still locked in it. That's the second grab, so it's a safety feature. So I undo it like so and you see now, I can't get the cutter out, it's still in there. Second grab, got it. Now I can take the cutter out and also with the Tritons, they have a full chuck that's got the collet locked in it. So I take that one out and I'm going to put the half inch. Shame I didn't get the third new dust port. It's on the way. Order printed first. Fair enough. The picture's a bit fuzzy, is it, Chris? Is it fuzzy for anyone else or is it okay? Maybe it is fuzzy. Yeah. I've set it up so that it's a, it's a set focus. I'll bring it in a bit closer. How's that? turn this around and tip it down even more. Is that any better Chris? I'm sorry if it's bad. Okay now I'm going to use the um, spiral up with the double bearings on it. This is a carbide one. Now again as it's turning this way it's bringing the, the, the um, waste up towards the router because the router is here. Now when I turn the router upside down, I'll do it to this camera here. When I turn the router upside, when I've got it in the bench there, obviously the cutter's going to be this way and it's going to be pulling the dust down, but that's still a spiral up. Okay, go to the other camera. I'm going to drop it in. Now I don't let it go all the way to the bottom because it transfers heat between the machine and the cutter. So I lift it up around about two millimeters and then tighten the collet up. Because the pin's in the armature, I can still one-hand it. And I make sure that this fellow is tight. There we go. Now, I'm going to lower this down. I'm gone. Lost and gone forever. And I need it to be the height. Move that out of the way. I need it to be the height of one of these pieces and I'm going to drop it down just a little more. That's good. Now I'm going to lock it at that height. So underneath here you won't see what I'm doing but there's a locking bolt that clamps it so it can't go anywhere. And now I'm going to pop John's dust guard on and as I say it's not really high enough for this but it's going to be better than nothing in this situation. See this one? It rotates. See that? I should have put the yellow one in. How about I do that so we can see it easier? 
I might do that. Throw the yellow one in. Undo. Now, if you want these things, John is making them. Go to www.yellowboxshed.com.au. And away you go. Now, also, for people who are my patrons, he's making these and doing them at a... Who was here? <laughs> he's doing these at a 25% discount if you're one of my patrons, and I think it finishes in a week's time. So, there you go. These are... Yeah, it was just one of those things that I had the idea and I thought that'd be handy. Now, why have I got it at 120 degrees? Because it can travel around the inside. See, see that? If it was the one that is 180 degrees, I wouldn't be able to get into that corner. Okay, if I pull it up there, you might see it a bit better. See that? It wouldn't have worked. Now we need some tape and put these things away because we do not want anything spinning around whilst we've got a router running. So I've got that turned on under there. And then if you want to have a look in here where I keep the cutters. This is where I, I love this little shelf that I made. This is a, around about a 15 degree incline. And I put all the small cutters up the front and that's a one-eighth, and I've labelled the ones that I can remember. <laughs> and it's a push to close. I'll put these away at the same time. Which one? That one up there. Goes in there. And I've got a rare earth magnet just here that holds the spanner. How cool is that? All right, now, double-sided tape. I know there's been a lot of talk about using double-sided tape or using um, blue tape, like a masking tape, and what else? Um, some kind of a glue. So a CA glue maybe or a spray. Let me get a chisel and I'll cut that off. Not really the right tool for it, is it? one of Arthur's carving tools. Ah, dear. So the weather has been funny, hasn't it? It's been really cold up here, and we've been very dry in the mount or Australia, eastern coast of Australia, is in drought conditions at the moment. Um, and it's been super hot. I see you've had records in, uh, in the States. Now, Again, how I do this, let me turn that around a little. I scratch with a healthy thumbnail until I pull enough up off the top, and there we go. Like so. So it's no real effort for me if I do it that way. You know, I've spent years trying to peel off a little bit on the corner and the stuff would peel back. So anyway, as I say, you just do this in the middle of it somewhere, and if you haven't got a thumbnail, Use a card scraper or, or a screwdriver, something to pull up enough that you can get a grip on it. There we go. Now, I believe John Lowry is at a Mets game today. Now, I don't know what a Mets game is, but he was seemed pretty excited about going. Uh, the corporate box and all that kind of stuff. So he nearly didn't go because he was... <laughs> You want to watch this show? Can you believe it? Okay. Um, dust board. But appears... I was like... I thought it would be helpful to someone, but appears... Okay. Da, da, da. Yes, I'm working the dust board. Currently, just the Craig. Same discount when other brands are released. Um, hi there, Frankie. Have a look at your video after this because I want to do something different on my cabinet door. Chris, everyone, is it okay to post my email on here your call if you want to you can um, I have no responsibility for if anyone does something that uh, takes advantage of it I'm gonna make sure that I'm lined up on the bottom here just very softly down on it for the moment there there now push down hard So 
So I have these bad boys joined together now. The one with the carving on it is now my template. So it's going to ride on the top. And you'll see how nice is that. All the way to there. And that's how far we got last time. And then I sanded this one to be nice and smooth. So we'll take this off. And I'm going to turn on a couple of uh, dusties. Let's put that there so you can see what's happening. It should still have focus okay. Um, the other thing you could do, Chris, is, as John said, um, the other thing you could do is... I was just feeling the end here. There might be a little bit of flex, but I think I'll be okay with it. Now, I have to go very slowly with this. And I'm going to do what's called a climb cut. To about there. And then I'm going to come in from the other side very, very slowly. Actually, I'm going to use my Japanese saw. I'm going to cut that end off. That's a fair bit to have there. So where are we with the Japanese saw? I love this saw, if I haven't told you. And let's hold it there. It's so efficient. Beautiful. Move that. That's probably made more dust there than I'm going to get with a router. With this guard. They're brilliant. I love them. <coughs> What's the time? 25 past. Now to do this, I'm going to throw some earmuffs on. And because I've just not long had pneumonia, I'll throw the dust mask on as well. Turn on that. So that's pulling down from there. I'll come around the other side. Turn the big fellow on. All right. Going well. <laughs> Again, pop this on. Get this out of here. You may want to turn the sound down a little bit when I turn the router on. Eye muffs. Good on you, George. Get yourself a pair of these. If you haven't won one, just buy them. Okay. As I say, I'm going to do a climb cut, which means I'm going to be pushing into the approaching side. It's going to turn this way. So that will be pushing the waste back down onto it. So the board itself will act as its own um, support. Going the other way lifts up to tear, but it's much more easier to control. So we'll see how we go. Realize you're not really seeing that. That side might be better. See how we're going. So we're starting to get a little bit, a little bit of a concern there. Turn that off. Now the reason being, I didn't have any tape on the end here. So I'll take this off and I'll talk about that. Turn that off. I'll turn the dust extraction off. All right, I might do the rest by hand. So what was happening there 
was because I didn't put any tape right up on the top here, I've only got the tape in the body here. So I was starting to get a reverberation. It was starting to, to bounce a little bit. Now there's two ways that I can fix that. I can separate this. Come on, with a chisel. Give me a sec. So I can separate this with a chisel anywhere here. And the tape will still be good. See that? The tape's still on it. And I might put some tape here. Now ideally what I should have done, and I can still do that, is I can put the tape on the other side and then I will be using the pattern going in what's considered to be the correct direction. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. A little bit of mucking around but I think we'll be okay. Take that tape off there. So instead of climbing, I'm going to be doing a conventional cut. Now this might be taking a little while, but that's okay. Nothing like a sharp chisel. And I'm going to take this right up to there. Like that. Okay, scratch it off. So a Mets game is go the Mets. It's a great dust mask. It's the uh, Trend Air Stealth, I think it's called. Now the reason I haven't got the big air respirator, the big one that's powered, is because my beard's not as big as it used to be. So there's a little bit of a bump there. I don't want that. And so this area here, because there's only a little goatee, it's fine with this. But if I'm doing stuff and it's hot, I like to wear the respirator because it blows a cool stream over my face. I'll have to read back through the posts there to see what the Mets is, because I saw something about that. I placed a piece of wood on the back with tape, right? Well, there's probably another way to do it. Now, this is going to take me all the way up that skinny section, and it's going to make the top section the template because that's what type of cutter I've got in there. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let me have a look at that. That's not moving. That's great. That'll work really well. Okay, you see what I've got there? I can slice this off. So, handy to have sharp tools. Now, now I'm going to have it up this way. I'll spin that around and I'll be cutting conventional and that will work a whole lot better. I should have done that the first time. I did, the, I did like that on purpose just to show you how not to do it. <laughs> how thick is that timber? That timber is around 22 millimeters, maybe 23. Dust mask on. That's pretty close with that. There's not much on that one. Let's put the earmuffs on again and I'll turn on the dust extraction. Then we'll do a little bit of carving. 
Put one on. Move those out of the way. Here we go. Oh, beautiful. I've got to be careful here. That's as far as I'm going to go. That's delivered a really, really nice cup there. I'm going to sand that because it's only cedar. I'm going to leave these two connected. Then I'll swing everything back this way. Like so. Drop that one down to there. Bring this camera back around. That's the good thing about doing this live is that uh, we get done what we can get done and it's not kind of polished. All right, now you might see, bring this around here a bit further, you might see I've got a couple of dogs. I'll pull this off. I've got a couple of dogs mounted down here. And that's so uh, what I can do is I can put it on the on my bench like that. And then slide a Craig bench clamp through here. So that's supporting. The grip tape is supporting. That's holding it there, and I'll put another one in from the other end. Gotcha. Come on. There you go. Beautiful. Now I can work on that easily. Where's that sandpaper in the block? There it is. Doesn't take long. This is 80 grit paper I'm using. I don't want to rush this part, so just bear with me. There we go. That's pretty good. As I say, that's, that's with 80. Now I'm going to try and get the camera around here a bit further so you can see what I'm achieving. So they're looking pretty nice. So now I'll get a card scraper and I'm going to pull those
That is so nice. How cool is that? That's magic. So what I can do is I can, um, I can just give that a fine sand now and that'll be lovely. So I'm taking it out of there. And we'll have a look at the carving. Now how I did this to start, and it was wrong. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you the mistake I made. What I did, let's separate these with the chisel. A broad chisel is good, a skinny chisel is not. There we go. Crack it down here. And a mallet would help me. Just happen to have a mallet. Look at that. There she goes. Beautiful. So the, now I have completely symmetrical. See that? It's so nice. I'll take the tape off. Done. And done. All right. So how I did this one was I got the original and a ruler. Come in closer, see if I can, if you can see it any better. So there's the original. And I measured the distance from the inside of the, uh, sorry, from the, the straight up and down section to the outside, traveling right through the center of the, the kind of circle, circular carving. And then I transferred those measurements onto here and then I went around with a pencil and freehanded the rest. Now, it then it dawned to me, wouldn't it be a lot easier if I did like we used to do at school with a 20 cent piece? Get a piece of paper and put it over where I was gonna carve. Now the reason I'm going off the end here is because that's going to give me my line-up point and also down there. Can you see that all right? Now obviously I need to turn that over. So what I do now is I get a pair of scissors and I cut that shape out, even this section here. And I'm gonna do that right now. I've got to grab some, some snips. And it's important to leave. Now this is, this is just my idea. It, it may not be the right way to do it, but I just looked at it and I thought, you know, I think I could do this. There we go. Just to get rid of that one. And then let's see if I can follow this kind of right. I'm going to now cut down that line. So that, that there, is the profile of, of this section here. See that? That's where it goes. So now I'm going to cut, going to keep cutting. I was about to say that nice work, repairing the mum's dressing table. Uh, came in late, what are those pieces for? David Lucy, a painter's palette knife is also excellent to separate. Brian Morning all. David Lucy, that's what I use. Okay, now I'm going to cut 
both lines, if I, if I can see them okay, because one is the top of my um, chamfering or, or 45 degree incline, and the other one is the bottom. This part might be a little bit boring. Vicky wanted me to make a, a, a picture frame today because she's, she wants to do a, a painting because she loves to paint. And I said, oh, I can't do it. She said, it's the only time you get that you've got free is to do stuff on the show. So I said, all right, well, we might do it next week. Now I've got to be careful not to cut through the other side. So you can see where I've cut. Now I'm going to cut on the other side here. Now the reason I'm doing this, as I say, is just so that when it doesn't matter how good or bad the carving is, the thing is that when these two items are side by side on a dressing table, they have to look the same. They don't have to look like Arthur's was because his won't be there. These are the replacements. It's like if you walk into a, into a store to buy a TV and they have all the screens up there beside each other. You know, and they, you do all this comparison. You're walking along and you go, wow, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. Wow, look at that one. That's even better. But the thing is, the one that's even better is normally the most expensive one in the store. And that's how they get you. So what you do is you look at one of the TVs without looking at any of the others and you just worry about the size and then have a quick look at the comparison. I'm going to try and get these off without destroying it. Have a quick look at the comparison and say, okay, I'm good with that one. I don't like that one over there. And you go through it and say, right, I'm happy with this. And then you blot it out and you take a photo. I got my phone, took a photo of the TV when I was looking at them. And then when you get home and you get that TV into your home, you will not have all of those other ones to compare it to. And your brain is fantastic. It will sort all of that out. You don't have to worry. You can trace that out with an X-Acto knife. I could have. Um, why not just put it on the new piece on the black down and then go over it again? It, I tried that and it didn't work. It didn't work this morning. Maybe I should have got a 6B pencil. But what I'm doing is I'm putting that on there like that. So that's, my, that's what I've got to do. And that will be my carving point. And as I say, side by side, down here, when they're side by side, and the mirror in between, everyone will think that's how it was always meant to be. So there we go, that's nice. So now I need to glue that down and I will straight away. And the glue that I'm using is just a glue stick. <laughs> Any old brand will do. So let's take that off, give her a twist, and then the graphite probably won't help holding it down, but you know what? We'll see. Yeah, I, I thought about doing that, Tim, and I thought, yeah, that, that's a great idea. It'll transfer it straight away, but it didn't. So I thought, oh, I've got to do something different. This is sticky stuff. Let's flip her over, hold it up until we get it in the right position. I'm going to let that dry. There you go. That's what I have to cut. And 
I think that'll be nice. I'm going to take it just a little bit more. You still have the license to do it freehand right at the end. I, as I say, I'll take that point round just a little bit further. But it will look so much like the other one. Then I, all I have to do is sand this off. It's gone. Now, let, I'll show you Arthur's carving tools while I'm here. We may not actually get to doing any of the carving because that might embarrass me. <laughs> and it's 10 to. We'll see how we go. I'll read quickly what else we had to do on the show and switch the cameras over. Back to the main camera. That one there. All those out and paste activities from elementary school are really paying off. It's true. Um, it's much faster than the measurement process. Analog computer techniques. You know, it's. I said last week on the show, there's so many ways to skin a cat. And my way might be slower, might be faster. You may have a better idea. That's, that's one of the reasons why I like doing this show is that we can all communicate and discuss what works for you. And, you know, someone else might be watching other than me. And I say, what a great idea. I don't want to do Dave's way. I want to do Peter's way. You know, it's, or I stuff the rest of them. I'm sticking with what Dave said. You know, I don't care. The main thing is that you're enjoying yourself. And maybe I can throw up a suggestion. Uh, <laughs> Chris, an hour's not long enough. Probably not. What's the next thing? But next thing, I, I was showing it to this camera. I'm an idiot. I forgot I'd turn it off. Um, here we go. Antique dresser, let's be doing a bit more, which we are. The Carbotec, um folding saws and flush cut saw competition for Australia. Get in and enter it. Um, and I think also it asks for comments to be put under this in the recording as well. So be aware of that. You might have to put some stuff in the competition and also put something down here because I'm tricky. <laughs> the dresser will look great when it's finished. Can't wait to see it all the time. It's going to be a while, Mitch. It's going to be a while. Okay, so the bull nose and quarter inch shoulder plane. And the measure stops on the docking station. We'll do the docking station first, then we'll come back to the, to the bull nose plane because jump into some new stuff before we continue on with the old stuff. And I'm going to switch to that camera. And hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Now, mine is pretty conventional as to what people do with a docking station. I'm going to quickly check that that camera is okay because I can't see the monitor. That is just Jim Dandy. Now, on my, on my docking station, I have tape here. So this is a left to right reading tape. This tape over on this side is a right to left lead, uh, reading tape. These stops, these are all cursors off table saws. So I bought these as a spare part. And that little cursor sits over the top of that. Just here is a 5 16th and quarter inch um, T-track that's let into a piece of melamine and it's pushing up against a piece of inch and a half thick plywood. These are old laminated or plywood beams that I used to use in construction. They'd be 200 deep by, you know, 45, I guess, something like that. And extremely straight and they stay straight. So that's behind each side going out. Now, you'll also notice that I have cut basically three millimeters off the back of mine because my fence sits three millimeters proud of these. These are not what I'm referencing off. This is what I reference off for when I'm using my saw. Okay, I've got it in trenching mode because I was doing a job during the week. That angle, this angle here, is 90 degrees. I don't care if this angle to that angle is 90 degrees or not, you know, because timber is all over the place. You know, if it's nice and straight, well, fine. So I've allowed three millimeters clearance for the timber to move around a little bit. It's important that I'm square at the end of the piece of wood. And the same at this side. Now, you will say, all right, well, you've got your measure over there, Dave. How the hell do you cut small pieces? Well, I'll show you on this side and I'll see if I can 
bring it up a little. I'm going to hold it there and see if you can see it all right. So see here, I've got zero, one, two, three, four centimeters. That's talking girl talk. So zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. When I say girl talk, it's sewing talk. This is what I meant. Not the guys don't sew and don't, please don't give me a hard time about that. It's just, I'm a kid of the 50s. All right. Um, now, the cursor is back here. So how it happens is when I bring this down to zero there and lock it, that's where I want it to be. Now back here, you'll see that I've actually clamped, bolted the capex down. Every now and then I'll take it out and I have to recalibrate it. So now what I'm going to do is you'll see if I turn the, the laser on, you'll see that the laser is just on this side. So I need to re-trim that again. So I'm going to do that right now. So now that point there is perfectly on zero back here on my tape. So if I want something, things blowing around over there, so if I want something, and I'll tip that around this way a bit further, to be, let's say, 50 millimeters long, now when I set the cursor up here to 50, there it is, the distance from here back to the cut is 50 millimeters. That's all there is to it. So I'm transferring the cut from here back to my reference measuring point. I've seen a lot of people are now wanting to put slots in the bench itself and not have this, and that's all well and good, but they can't get their reference point up to there unless they have a dirty big long cursor floating on the top here. I've seen uh, proprietary made pieces you know, that, that finish here and I'm thinking to myself, why are you finishing back here? You're restricting the amount of cut that you can do to something that's around uh, possibly 16 inches long and just doesn't work for me. Anyway, so I thought you might be interested in having a look at that. I'll bring this camera back down this way and spin it around here. Sorry if I'm getting you seasick. Um, up a touch, about there. And I'll bring the other camera back into it. Um, let me see, the dresser will look great. Yep, okay, so you've all been watching what I've been saying, transfer that to there, so there you go. Now. What time is it? It's about 10 to. All right, I told you I was going to show you Arthur's bullnose plane and his inch and a quarter. These are beautiful. I love them. All right, so I found the bullnose. This is the brass bullnose plane. Now, I haven't done anything to clean this one up yet. A lot of people will be saying that's great because patina is what gives them value. Now, you know what? Maybe it's hereditary, but I don't like things looking old because I don't think Arthur liked like, look, things looking old either. So how do I know that? Well, this is the one from last week that I showed you. This is my three-quarter brass, and I tidied it up, and it looks a whole lot nicer than when I got it out of the box. So this morning while I was waiting for the show to start, I grabbed Arthur's... Um, inch and a quarter shoulder plane. Now this is rosewood and brass and this is how it looked when I got it out of the box this morning. Now I have taken the blade and also the wedge out of it. Okay, I'll put them back a little bit later. The blade actually needs sharpening. Now why do I think Arthur liked things tidy? This is why. Turning it around, this is an area I've cleaned up already. I've cleaned up down the top, cleaned the other side. Isn't it beautiful? Now, here you go. Here's the money shot. I don't know if you can see that, but that is saying Arthur J. Johnson in cursive script. Now, I don't think, if I hold it steady there, you might be able to see it. Let's take it to the other camera because it's really beautiful. Uh, where are we? There. You may... Oh! 
transition. I keep forgetting that, don't I, guys? How's that? Now, he's had that done in cursive script. This man had a lot of pride in his tools, and that's why I'm thinking that he would be happy with that looking the way that I've tidied it up. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take this down and show my mum uh, in the next week or two because she used to love hanging out with him in his workshop when she was a little tacker. You know, she's only three or four. I tell the story that, you know, she remembered that uh, Arthur and her were in the workshop one day. It's only a tiny little thing, the workshop, and he had a packet of uh, peppermints. And he put one there, one there, and he said, we're going to have one of those now, and we're going to think about what we're going to do next. Now, I used to do the same kind of thing with a cigarette when I was an idiot and smoked. You know, I'd, I'd stop halfway through a job, I'd be building a staircase or whatever, and I'm thinking, all right, I've got to do the, the kites for the set of winders around it, as, you know, a, um, a, 40, a 90 degree bend in a staircase. I'd stop for a cigarette. Well, I think his idea was a whole lot <laughs> better to have, have, have a steamroller or a peppermint. What's the next thing I was going to talk about? Okay, so we've got that, and I think my sheet that's got all the blurb on it is there. All right, so we've had a look. Antique dresser, carpet tech, bull nose planes, and the inch and a quarter shoulder plane. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Um, hand carving, I didn't really get to that. Um, support the channel through Patreon and the Amazon links. As I say, I've done the, uh, the ones for Australia. But whilst we're here, this is Arthur's carving tools. So here we go. Let's have a look. This is how they were in the box in my toy box. So he has a sheet of calico or some kind of woven cloth. And we open it up. This is just magic. And there they all are. I'll switch the cameras again so you can have a look. I'll bring this in closer. And I'll switch the cameras. There we go. Aren't they beautiful? They're just absolutely glorious. Now, I don't know what brand they are. Um, I did, on Arthur's Toolbox, I did the series on what all the stuff about them. And these are still razor sharp. And I did show everyone this one. This is a kind of an angled, almost a scraper. And in the end, it's threaded, timber thread. I put a bit of graphite powder on it because it was going, it was horrible. So there's a tiny countersink. And the other one is a broken thing. I don't know what it is. So there you go. So maybe next week, maybe next week we'll do a little bit of carving as well. But I just love this old stuff. Am I the only one that likes the old gear? I don't know. I'm a tragic. What's the time? It's just after 12. I've got someone coming to see me soon. So switch that back over to there. It might have been a little bit boring today, guys, but you know. I try and do what I can do, and as I say, live is great because, you know, it's, it's spontaneous. Um, you will give me information, I'll pass information out to you. Um, with the router table, you know, it's one of those things. Be careful with router tables. I've used one an awful lot. I knew when it was about to bite, so I stopped, and I changed the way that I was doing it. So, it's, it's one of those things. Don't always do as you see other people do. Use your common sense as well. And your body has been, will give you warning signs and it'll say, uh, that's not really feeling comfortable. Stop, just stop and do it another way. Okay, the old tools do have soul, Barry. Thanks, Derek, for watching. Love the old gear, John. Found a stack of hand planes from my grandfather this week. That would have been so rewarding. 
Again, if you're interested in getting any of the, um, those things that John's making, uh, the yellow box shed bus shroud kind of thing for the router table. Again, he's going to make them for all different types of router tables. Get in quick, place an order. If you're one of my patrons, you'll get 25% off. If you're just going through the, the show or my live stream chat group, there'll be a code as well. And he'll give you 10% off. Now, something for in the future. John is said to me, Dave, how about in the future we do a certain level of patron We'll give them 10% off anything in Yellow Box Shed. And that will just stay there as a standard. So I think it's going to be a $5 tier. So if you're in there for the $5 for the month, which is basically a cup of coffee, John will offer you 10% off all of his stuff on Yellow Box Shed. But you will need to be in that $5 tier to get the coupon, the little code word, to be able to put in. So John hasn't got that set up yet, but it will be happening soon. All right, Stephen Lee, love the old tools. Thank you very much for what you do. Thank you. Love it. All right, another great show, fit for purpose, not old stuff. Exactly right. All right, Gwen Jones, great show. You all keep safe. Yes, my sentiments, exactly. Let me see if I can find this other one down here. Uh, that one and that one. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you next week. Bye.